miles. I know you're trying to get away from me. I know you're on the move. You can run, but you cannot hide. Not from me. I've spent too much time tracking you down. I won't let a simple little mishap ruin what I've planned for so long. I was a fool to think you'd accept me. I was a fool to think anyone could love me the same way that I love them. But at this point, I realized it isn't up to you. It's not your choice whether or not you want to spend time with me. It's not your decision whether you love me. It's not your place to choose whether or not I'm worthy of your affection. It's mine, and mine alone. You'll come around to see my point of view, my dear. Believe me. You'll come around. Eventually. You'll wear that ring with joy. You'll be proud of it. You remember, don't you? The ring. That ring that you rejected so arrogantly. The ring I had so carefully selected for you. The ring that I spent a fortune on. I thought it all be worth it. I thought your delighted face would more than make up for every single penny. And yet you laughed at my face when I asked you the question. Don't worry. You'll get the chance to make up for what you've done very soon. Twenty miles. I know you wanted to tell your friends. Too bad they never got the message. They would have rescued you, wouldn't they? They would have come to your help to turn away your creepy ex, as you call me. Is that what you think? It's really too bad that by the time their phones chimed, they were long gone. <laughs> I never really liked them in the first place. Not when we met. Not after you broke my heart into a million pieces. I don't think it's cruel to admit this. After all, it went both ways. I still remember the look on your best friend's face when I first approached you. Like I was disgusting, thickening, hideous even. Nothing but a piece of used chewing gum under your heel. I guess that's what I get for falling in love with one of the popular kids. I should have known my place. Should have stayed within my group of nerds and losers. How childish your friends were. Even after high school ended... They never stopped thinking like that. They never managed to outgrow the belief that they were somehow better than others, better than me. I can tell it was them who eventually drove a wedge between us. Whispered into your ear like a little devil on your shoulder. Ruined what we had. But now those voices are gone. They can't feed you their lies anymore. It's nothing but the truth from here. Ten miles. I know how desperately you wanted to call the police. Too bad there's no signal. Strange. 
isn't it? After all, I can call you just fine. I don't understand why you'd reach out to them anyway. It's not like they had helped you any of the past times you've called. They determined that I am non-threatening. Harmless, really. You didn't even get that restraining order you begged them for. I may be blinded by love, but I can see how much you tried to push me away. How often you've tried to get rid of me. How your love for me has slowly turned into hate. Believe me, it was hard to accept this at first. It was hard to accept that your feelings for me had changed so dramatically within such a short amount of time. <sighs> I would have never thought that we could end up as anything but soulmates. Fortunately for me, the string of fate isn't so easily cut, my love. Whether or not you realize this, or even want to realize, you're still my soulmate. Nothing can change that. Even if the police were to lock me away forever, you can't escape your destiny. You cannot change what's predetermined. Remember that. Five miles. I know where you're going. I know of every single step you take every time you change paths. You think you're so smart, don't you? Turning off your location services. Changing direction. Seemingly at random. You forget that I know you better than you think, my love. Even if I didn't have the capabilities of tracking your every step, your every movement. I know you well enough to predict your next thought so precisely. All this technology pales in comparison. I know exactly where you're heading. It's that little cabin in the woods, isn't it? Your safe spot, as you call it. Now, I know you've never told me about it, so you might be a little confused. Let's simply say, your family becomes rather talkative when you bring a nice bottle of wine. I know all about your hiding place. Not only its location, but also all the heartwarming stories that are attached to it. How you ran off to it whenever you were angry as a child. How you used it as a young teenager to seek shelter from your own home when your parents wouldn't stop fighting once again. How you begged your father not to sell the cabin when the rest of your childhood home was to be put up for sale and how you still go there on occasion whenever you feel the need for some safety, some security. The warmth of the fireplace and the hug of the same old blankets that kept you warm as a child. Only, those last parts, I didn't hear from your family. I saw it with my own two eyes. You never knew, did you? That I followed you there, time and time again. I took great care not to be noticed by you, after all. I made sure to hide in the bushes, away from the lights. Stayed outside all night long, in the freezing cold. And all that, just to make sure you're safe. Safe? Alone at night in the big, 
big forest. I was worried about you, you see. Because whether or not you look at me with so much hate in your eyes, I care about you. One mile. I know your biggest fear, dearest. I know everything about you. I know how much you used to love reading about all those crimes. Murder. Kidnapping. Severed body parts. You've always had this weird fascination with it. You almost religiously studied those interrogation videos, those self-proclaimed experts analyzing every last twitch of an eye. You used to love the morbid and macabre, the clinically insane. You used to go on and on about the psychology of a murderer, about what makes a serial killer tick. You used to. It's not so fun anymore when everyone calls your partner a psycho now, is it? When your friends warn you that someday, you'll end up dead in a ditch at the side of some road. Clothes torn, hair ripped from your scalp, your face mangled beyond recognition. You used to love those crime shows, but so did I. I took in every second of them just as much as you did, and I memorized every little trick they had to offer. I know your biggest fear, my dearest. I know it's me. But what I want to know now is, how loudly can you scream? Hello, darling. So good to see you again.